Today, I am going to introduce you a new character from a new book. His name is Mincemeat. He is a human-sized ginger-colored cat. Is that possible? No, because he is fictional. Look, this cat is him. He's just holding lilacs in his paws. So, in, in this book, Mincemeat goes on an incredible train ride with his owner, who he calls Great Grandma, to, vi to visit her Aunt Petunia. So let's see what the story is. Well, this book is actually, it's written by Lois Davis and illustrated by Sarah Leigh Will. So, the whole story starts whenever Mincemeat and Great Grandma were in their home. Whenever Mincemeat was going to cook a cake for Great Grandma and Aunt Petunia. So, since they were going to go there that exact same day. Then, Mince, then Great Grandma just walked in and, and she saw conkers everywhere. Conkers on the cupboards. Conkers on the island. Conkers on the, on the countertops. Then, Great Grandma said, Mince me, what are all these conkers doing here? I thought they were for your cake. Then Mince Meat said, No, Great Grandma. Conkers are poisonous if you eat them. The sweet chestnuts are for the cake. So Mince Meat was actually baking a cake. So then Mince Meat said, since the conkers are poisonous to eat, I set them all over the place because, and I set little holes in them. Spiders hate the smell of the conkers, so they would scamper away. You know I hate spiders, right? Great grandma, and the ones with the tickly legs. Yes, I know, Mincemeat. Great grandma said. Then the next day, Mincemeat added all of the remaining things some cheese flavored chocolate for great grandma, a bottle of cherry, and a bottle of cat milk. Although Mincemeat did love cheese, he should never eat chocolate, he knew, because that is very bad for cats indeed. While the cake was baking, ding! The cake was done. Then, after the cake was finished, Mincemeat packed it in and put it in some wrap and then put in some other things. Then, Mincemeat and Great Grandma, along with a picnic basket that the Mincemeat set the cake in, were all going to the nearest railway station on a motorbike. It was, the railway station was called Candy Floss Central. So, the train that they were going to ride on was named Zane. And guess what? Zane could actually talk. Well, really, can trains talk in real life? No, because this book is fictional. So, after that, whenever everyone boarded Zane, and then choo-choo, they were off to the next station, which was called Lilac Hill. After they went to Lilac Hill, they saw Mincemeat saw a stamp that only sold lilacs. Mincemeat had to buy some for Great Grandma, and then he, his plan was he would buy some lilacs for Great Grandma, get back on the train, and they would keep going off to the next station. Then, what? They meant me jumped right off the train and bought some. Then, the, then the whistle blew. It, then Mince Meat instantly recognized the train was just about to leave. But then Mince Meat turned back. It was too late. The train was already leaving. So he started running really fast. Then Great Grandma started shouting his name. Then instantly, whenever he heard that, the driver slowed the train down. If it wasn't for Great Grandma screaming Mince Meat's name, he would have missed the train and he would have missed the chance to get to Aunt Petunia. So, after Mince Meat's adventure, he just fell asleep. Then he got up and then was, the train was still moving. They, then the station master shouted, Bumblebee Bridge! Next stop, Bumblebee Bridge! Then, since Mince Meat woke up then, he felt quite hungry. Then, Great Grandma opened up the picnic basket and started eating fried dandelions and other things that Mince Meat made too. And fried dandelions were one of Great Grandma's favorites. So, by the end of the picnic, they were at another station called Popcorn Cove, which was actually a beach. So then, a family, a couple families of seagulls made their way in. So then, 
One of the seagulls, the one of the baby seagulls, spotted the remains of mincemeat in Great Grandma's picnic. Without asking, he took the last fried dandelion and he gobbled it down there. Then his mother was angry. Cedric, you naughty boy, you don't help yourself to other food, especially without asking. Too late, you've eaten it now. Just apologize to the lady and her super beautiful cat. Then he hung his head and said, I'm sorry. So, while they were on their way to the next station, Hamster Heights, Zane thought, it's now or never if I want to be an express train, because being an express train was Zane's dream. So, unexpectedly, he went faster. Hamster Heights next station, Hamster Heights next station, the station master said. Then, Zane just went right past the station, but then, Zane went. After Zane went right past the station, duckling down next station, duckling down next station, the station master yelled. Then, since Zane would not stop, the emergency cord was yanked. Then, Zane instantly came to a halt. Zane, why did you go super fast? My passengers missed miss their stop at Hamster Heights. I'm sorry, Zane said. I just wanted to be an express train, so I accelerated. Then, the station master said, You certainly were. Instead, if you could have just told the driver, we could have changed the route for to make it more interesting for you. Whenever you feel sad or unhappy, it's best to tell someone you know. Then Zane said, Okay. So then, after that, they went all the way to the next station, Marshmallow Ridge. So then, everything was made of marshmallows on that platform. The waiting room, the floor, the benches were made of marshmallows too, which made them soft and springy. And there was a stand that sold only marshmallows, of course. I love a bag of marshmallows, Mince Meat said. And he thought, then a boy wa walked into the train with a couple bags of marshmallows. One filled to the top with marshmallows. He offered the bag to Mince Meat. Thank you, Mincemeat said. So they finally reached the stop that they needed to go at, Field Mouse Meadows. Then, after that, Mincemeat and Great Grandma popped off of the train, along with that picnic basket. Then they walked over to Aunt Petunia, where she drove them to her house in their car. After that, Mincemeat gave them the chestnut cake as they ate it. They then Aunt Petunia asked, is there any exci anything exciting today? Did you have any fun? Why, yes, we did. Great Grandma said, right, Mincemeat? And then Mincemeat told her the story. Then she said, wow, that must have been very fun. I wish I could go. And then, was it fun for you? Yes, that was super exciting, they said. Everyone, go and read this book to meet some crazy characters. A talking train, a talking cat, and a crazy setting. A platform made of marshmallows. So actually, I could picture the story in my mind. I was looking outside the window, seeing Marshmallow Ridge, eating marshmallows on the way. That's so nice. I love reading these books. Friends, thanks for watching my videos. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned in on my new videos. I'll fly over to my next video. See you there.